Hi, this is Shadi and today it's gonna be Karate's self-defense techniques. Old ones going through old footage. I'm not gonna comment on the striking for obvious reasons as I am not a striker. However, I will comment on the body positioning and the timing and the basic self-defense techniques that you would also see in Judo and at the same time discuss the old approach of Karate much like all other combat sports that made it to the Olympics, these aspects are being somewhat ignored to breed elite level athletes. So without further ado, let's begin with the first scenario here. Two people being seated and someone attempts to surprise them with an attack. Now notice the kicks. Kicks are highly effective when it comes to self-defense, not necessarily to knock someone out, but to create this very far barrier between the attacker and the defender. Um, it has a long reach and at the same time it can easily startle them, especially on the knees and we're gonna see why for in an instant. So here you can see uh, keeping distance with a very good kick. Now this one on the knee especially, it can be very good for grapplers. I myself as a grappler, I understand the importance of this one here this old Gracie self-defense footage, he taps the knee, which very much not only startles someone, but also puts their uh, balance somewhat forward. Uh, and from there, you can actually close the distance, clinch either the upper body or go for a Morote Gari. This is here. The Uke is none other than Hoyce, the winner of the first UFC. Let's see him here kick and then attempts a Morote Gari, another one here, kick and goes for Morote Gari and we all know where that led him, winning the first UFC. Here also as a judoka when you're grip fighting, especially someone taller, pushing uh, above the knee with your foot, you can actually disturb their balance forward as I mentioned earlier and from there you can get a higher grip and start to dominate the gripping game. Also old school self-defense judo this kick is very important to disturb the attacker and keep them from getting close to you as you see here kyuzo mifune demonstrating it with the famous shirai so here he kicks and disturbs the balance forward more than it should be and from there he can start to take control of the arm and finish with a wrist lock so now Let's see here this one. He grabs the hand and as he rotates his waist, he takes the arm away from him and pins it. It can easily be ended with a waki getami. Here you see it, uh, one of judo's staples when it comes to submissions. Stand up and on the ground in kata and in randori. In randori, obviously, it's newaza only for safety reasons as the game is very much evolving and the explosiveness of the stand-up can create very dangerous Kansetsu Waza in the stand-up. Also here, as I mentioned earlier, you turn your waist towards them with the arm that is gripping you and from there you push the elbow as you come forward. This is the first technique that you will learn in Aikido. If you plan on training Aikido or you've trained Aikido, you would know that this is the first technique that you learn and it can be turned into a waki katami. Let's see it one last time. So they're crossing paths and from behind he tends to cross, grip and push the shoulder here. He rotates very similar to the Aikido technique but hits with the elbow and it can end with a waki katami. Now when it comes to several guys trying to grip you your odds of surviving or not getting hurt are very slim and we all know this. But again, we go back to the kicking. The first thing that you should do is to just start moving around, keeping your waist low because if you stand up, you're going to be a sitting duck. So keeping on the move when two guys are gripping you is very crucial. And from there, as you saw, his first attack is the kick and keeping distance. Um, it's very crucial to increase your odds of survival and getting away from them and lessening the grip. Now, this one here with the pistol, 
I'm gonna try to comment on the pistol aspect, not so much on the striking. So this one here is very classic. You take the barrel away from you and then you strike the face. It can work, especially if you have no other option but to fight. But here, uh, kicking the leg and getting away, it's, it's not so much what you need to do. Like kicking the gun is probably gonna piss them off even more and they'll probably shoot you. Now here, this is when they attack you with a jaw or a stick or a staff. It's very crucial that you grapple with the staff and chances are they're gonna keep gripping for the obvious reason. It's because if I'm attacking you with a staff and you grip it, and then even if you put me in a very bad position, I will keep gripping it because if I let go, now you have the staff and I have nothing and I have nothing to lean on or support. Even if you take me down and I'm gripping the staff, I can actually use it as a support to actually get back up. So to people that say, why is he still gripping it? That's so ridiculous. There's actually a very good reason behind it. So you want to keep gripping it so they don't strike you with it and they don't end up with a staff and you have nothing. So uh, that's why the whole, why is he still gripping an Aikido? This is the basic explanation for it. Now, when it comes to striking, uh, especially in self-defense, it's very crucial. Even if you look at the old kata of judo, the self-defense ones, striking is everywhere to disturb the balance, to disrupt the attacker as they're attempting to grip you from behind here, as you see, stepping on the toes. All of it is designed to destabilize someone, not necessarily an elite type striking, but more so to fluster someone as you attempt to do what you need to do. So striking is very beneficial for self-defense. Again, not elite striking, elite boxing or elite karate or Muay Thai. It's just the right spot where you need to strike, like the, the foot, the knee, the groin, uh, the throat. Again, not so much to knock them out, but to proceed towards your grappling. This is the idea from these kata and the, the striking in, the, in those kata. So striking all around is very essential. That's why I decided to do this video because there's a lot to be picked up from those, especially the kicking when you are trying to maintain distance. Uh, it's a, it's a long reaching weapon and also it can keep them at bay. It can startle them and from there you can proceed either to grapple or to strike depending on your specialty or your discipline so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content but my main content will always be on this channel here so please don't feel obliged but your support would mean greatly like i said if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening